um, was about prolapse. So she got pregnant, had a baby, and had a prolapse. She had no idea what that even was. And she had it and she did not know what was going on. So can you, I'm assuming other people don't know what a prolapse is. Mm. But actually she was like a, a con, she was a kind of mind, nutrition, same, same concept, super healthy. And, but, and that's why I was kind of want to advise on it because that's just, oh, did I work out too much or that was the problem or, you know, and that's why I'm kind of that question. Um, so, Sean, is there something I can do during pregnancy and childbirth to so avoid, avoid or in, But in this case, her concern was like, oh, did I work out too much? I should have not worked out during my pregnancy. So that would have not happened because now I had like, I was too strong and I pushed it out. Pushed it out, yeah. <laughs> so just just uh to give a little bit of information yeah. so a prolapse is just a bulging of a different organ through the vaginal wall so it just kind of protrudes out uh through the vagina so you can have either the bladder coming down so this is the bladder coming down in the vagina and kind of bulging out you can have the rectal area kind of bulge out uh, through the posterior wall of the vagina and then you have the uterus uh, which can prolapse through and then through in the vaginal area so there's three areas that you can um, have a prolapse so not everybody that has a prolapse is the same thing and a lot of uh, women or people think that when we say prolapse we need oh my bladder's falling out no. but it's not necessarily the bladder it can be the bladder but it can also be the uterus and it could be the rectal area and those are all three different part yeah. of the prolapse is there anything that can be done before to prevent it so Prolapse are, they're a bit difficult because obviously, yes, there are risk factors for having prolapse. So yes, just pregnancy itself is a risk factor just because of the increased abdominal pressure on the pelvic floor, which can have prolapse. Obesity or abdominal obesity would be one, like uh, chronic coughing. Uh, again, anything that kind of increased the abdominal pressure to push down. Uh, People that have a very uh, heavy lifting for their job on a daily mm -hmm. basis, that's a lot of stress on the pelvic floor. Uh, we said we said just the pregnancy, but obviously, yes, like pushing. So if we were talking about like a vaginal birth, obviously pushing uh, the longer that you push. So if you push for three hours and above, that would increase your risk. If you have a very um, big baby, so mm -hmm. like a 10 pounder or above, uh, that is a risk factor or like if we use like forceps uh, or like an assisted vaginal birth that can increase the risk of prolapse but again even if you have a c-section it does not reduce or prevent prevent the the risk of getting a prolapse because the pregnancy itself is a risk and then I'm gonna always say like there's genetics in there so like just some people just have in their genetic just tissues that are just weaker weaker and lacking that mm. extra tone and strength so there there is a genetic component even without like a genetic diagnosis just genetically their tissues are just not as strong and tend to be more prone to having prolapse but what about like exercise during pregnancy will that cause a prolapse the exercise during pregnancy will not cause a prolapse. It's actually good to exercise in pregnancy. Pre we always recommend 150 minutes per week of exercise. We usually say to get the heart rate up. Mm -hmm. So a lot more like of the cardio. But then again, if you are already uh, weightlifting or weight doing weight bearing exercise, if you were doing them before pregnancy, you are going to be fine to do them. Uh, during pregnancy we don't necessarily put like a limit but it kind of you have to adapt to the pregnancy uh, so then it's always good to have like a physiotherapist with you uh, to kind of guide you into mm -hmm. exercises and modification to do but I'm not saying not to mm -hmm. so you can't really predict if you're going to have a prolapse or not um, there's not really anything you can do to make it worse or cause a prolapse um, once it happens once you notice that there's something down there there's a bulge can you do something about it and yes you can of course <laughs> it's not the end of the world no and like prolapse um, although it can be like uh, uncomfortable or like alarming um, it's not dangerous in any way okay. Um, and I always recommend the number one thing we can do a little bit of pelvic floor physiotherapy, especially yeah. 
pregnancy or not pregnant. It is the first thing that we do. Because uh, it's not always permanent, right? Exactly, this is, yeah. to some point, reversible. Exactly, yeah. So no panic. So okay, uh, how far gone you can be in... To be reversible? Yeah. So, I mean, again, same as the um, the vaginal tear that you can have during a, a labor or like delivery, I should say, you, you can grade the, the tear. Well, you can also grade a prolapse. So we have a grade one, which is just slightly protruding in the, vagi the vagina. We have a grade two that can go like lower in the vagina up to like the hymen. hymen. The opening. Opening, thank you. And then the grade three, which goes past the hymen. So it actually like, so when you're bearing down or that you are bearing down or not, like you can see it past the opening. And then grade four is like completely out. So obviously it's like 100% protruding. Uh, so I'm going to say that like a grade four will not be no. reversible. A grade three will not be Partially. reversible. A grade one and two can... Uh, definitely uh, That's fair. Re can be reversible or like at least maintained so what but you're saying there's always treatment for all of those things. yes it's surgical like for so again just uh, physical therapy can definitely be one um, uh, like when I say uh, physical therapy is like pelvic floor Wait, the experts, the experts, and then um, there would be use of the pessaries that we can use. Again, pessaries I would do like more when you're symptomatic, because if you have a prolapse that the doctor notices but you don't feel symptomatic, we don't treat. Ah, interesting. But we can have pessaries, and then obviously yes, in in more severe case we can uh, use um, surgeries. But here at Sparkle, <laughs> so for the more, um, obviously like a grade three and four, uh, I, I wouldn't have any treatment from Sparkle uh, that we can do, but a grade one, a grade two, uh, definitely we can do a laser, uh, laser treatment of the vagina to kind of tighten, in, uh, tighten the vagina um, a little bit more that can help with the prolapse. Um, and how does that work? What, through what mechanism would laser help a prolapse? The this it's a CO2 uh, laser. It's the Intima laser, and it, it's um it's so it creates um it creates little trauma to the tissue, mm -hmm. and when the tissue regenerates, then it creates more collagen, uh, thicker uh, tissue, healthier tissue, and everything kind of just tightens up. Okay, so it and it can help. Support. Yeah, it helps with the support, so it helps with the like the prolapse symptoms again, the the lighter grades, mm -hmm. and it helps also by the same mechanism like the incontinence. Oh. So most likely like the um, um, stress incontinence, meaning like when you sneeze, when you cough, or that you have a little bit of leakage. So incontinence is not the same thing as prolapse. Those are two two different, different things. things. Yes. You so when somebody says like, oh, I think my bladder is falling down, well, you have to clarify. What mm -hmm. do you mean? Do you feel like a little bulge or pressure in the vagina, or is it actually that you're leaking? Because those can be two, two different, different things. things. Yeah. Perfect. Hmm.